Fortune. Um, Wynn did cause a problem in round one, down to turn number one. Dominic Engel, you were actually driving that race. Did you? Do you think the win today will, uh, or the lack of it, will actually be of uh, some kind of assistance to the drivers? Would that have been a further added problem for them, especially in turns one and turns three, I suppose? It should help them since they can just do what they did in practice and not worry about what might happen with the win. Yes, I think that the wind in, tur in uh, race one caused an incident into turn one, and we are away on the grid now. And this was a quickly. Oh, we've got a crash. Lombardi has crashed for player zone. Oh, they're all piling oh, in. This will be a red flag. This will be a red flag. What on earth? Oh, and there's another crash into turn number three. It looks like the second gravity. I think the gravity GT300 car has uh, spun off as well. So that's a. Uh, well. I don't tell you what to say about that. I'd be surprised if they let this go. Anyway, we are apparently still going to continue on with this race. It was a standing start, so I've been caught out slightly. Hammer leads uh, for the moment for a Gravity F uh, GT500 down the back straight. See if uh, we can analyse which cars are in worse condition after that pile up into turn number two. STO have come off the worst of everybody now down in the last place. They look to be involved and spun around in the turn one instant, but not too much damage on that car. As we come into the chicane for the first time, this is likely to be the, the place where most people flip, I would say, a dangerous place for most cars into here. It looks like everybody's got through safely. Gahammer across the line leading. Regler second for Sonic Realms F FXR. Schuyler third. Uh, but he's going to be passed by Virus around the outside in a brave move into turn number one and turn number two. And that's a good start to the race for them, and they're up a few positions already. And of course, in this sport, oh, we've got a half spinner. Looks like Malkowski for Conquest just managing to save it. Three wide to turn number three. But um, of course, the first five. Oh, and we've got another little touch there. It's Perry Motorsports go around in three after Conquest of the Conquest car. So it's um, it's all action here, as I kind of suspected it would be in this tight, narrow track. Um, but of course, they're all fighting out to be in the top five come the end of this race and qualify for the main race, an 84 lap race, uh, sorry, 80 lap race, 80 laps, so which will not be a standing start, which uh, I think caused the problem into turn number one, so thankfully, hopefully, that won't be repeated again as we come around Shoyla. to complete the second lap at 27, and Shoyla has gone up, Rudy. Is it in the chicane? Yeah, it overshot the braking zone and uh, got caught in the wall. Not too much damage, but we did lose the positions. Seems though he's got very, seems like he's got very lucky there. We have a battle for third position now. This is rather hectic at the moment. Team Virus all over the back of Quake. Quake made the pass apparently. Of course, they're starting from the back as they've only just signed up for this race. That's uh, uh, Goik and Nikki Dakovic. I think south of hell, so, south of heaven. Sorry, uh, they're called. As they um, round and um, toward the back straight again. Only now getting more apparent who's actually doing what pace, since everyone is now spread out and doesn't have to worry that much about crashing into someone else. Car 74 actually has jumped the start. Who's that? Is that. Um... That's Poolins. Yeah, 74B... Oh, I'm not even going to try to convince, uh, try to pronounce that. It's uh, a Latvian team. They have jumped the start, and they've got drive through penalty to complete, I'd imagine, by the end of this lap. So that's a bit of a blow for them. They're actually the last car in GT500, sorry, GT300 at the moment who'd be qualifying, so that's going to move... Is that... That must be Lanzarote racing team, I think. Oh, no, sorry. Is it? Yes, maybe it Scuderia is. Scuderia Gas. Scuderia Gas. Okay, team names, I still haven't learned them from round one, problems. But, so, all actually at the start of this race, it's starting to settle down a little bit more now. Yeah, I'm looking through the cars and all the minor damage they got, but it seems like the number 57, the LLM GD300 car, got the, the worst damage out of the T1 uh, scrap. Oh, and I note that uh, Dennis Lint isn't driving this. It's a blow for last that more sports. I'm sure they would have expected Dennis to fly through the field for them. It's really Pinto at the moment, so it looks like we're not going to see Dennis Lint today. That's uh, a shame. I would have liked to see him in the FXR for last that more sports. I'm sure everybody else would have as well in the commentary box. 
certainly been interesting. Oh, car upside down. That's we have a car. 67. Okay. That's 67. a. XR upside down 67 angle of, and he just joined the spectators, so no safety car, it doesn't look like. I'm gonna carry on. Goik sets the fast lap of 107.97 in the GT500 class, so they're starting to wind up toward the back of Regler. Of course, at the moment, with this, the top three really haven't sort of made a bit of a gap for themselves in GT500. Uh, oh, an angle of, you're not allowed to leave the pits and go back on track, mate, you're over, your, your race is over. But it seems as though the top five actually is reasonably settled at the moment, unless Tobias Schroeder can catch back up to the battle between Virus and is that Piri? I think, uh, yes, that's Piri, isn't it? And number 67 still attempting to. No, nobody's off turn one. Philip Diaz is trying to alert us somebody's off of turn one. Oh, was it? Apparently, pink car was off. It does look like it's been to the wall on the left hand side there, so possible. I was Ah, yes, it's, our, it's, the, it's the Latvian team that I'm not even going to bother trying to attempt to pronounce. Who still have not completed their drive through pants. No damage. Oh no, sorry, there is a bit of damage. It's on the right hand side. No, it's not. It's on the left hand side. I'm, I'm having a blonde day today, it seems. Drag race down the straight between them. Between it looks 81. Like XR definitely got the legs there. Got quite a bit of two in the action there. I see that a lot today. And here comes is that the 63 on LLM GT3. That's Piri Motorsport making the pass. Hmm. It's interesting to know, guys, that the Team Virus car has had a problem in this lap and is being passed by Schroeder for. That must be for fourth position, is it? Oh, no, it's for fifth actually. It's for fifth. Schroeder back up into the top five after his mistake earlier on. Something must have happened to the new virus car, didn't we see that? Looking at the tire. Oh, 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 what a red car! Collision with lagged. 23. It was a, yeah, it looked as though it was that just a little bit of lag there, Rudy. Yeah, there's no damage to the rear end to the virus car. I was spectating his car to look at the tire temps and find something where he lost the timing. I was just about to say that uh, his rear tire temps look quite hot compared to the other ones, so he probably half spun, and then uh, this accident happened. Huge fight for second in the GT300 class. Woohoo, four, four cars. Looks like Dimitri over uh, glowing pistons going to go right the outside of the lot of them. I wonder this car of set comes up the inside for Tiger Express. Don't want to squeeze oh, each other too much. Wide. Three wide up the hill almost. Yeah. Don't want, to, don't want to make contact in XRs and turn one with that nice little gravel trap on the outside there, but they make it cleanly round there, so far at least. Trying to go for the inside gap there. For too old, too slow. All too slow. Now it's Lobato who's sizing up a look for what would be fourth position. These guys are in the top five. Yeah, they are. So if they if they continue to race like this, Makowski, Mac sorry, Makalowski for conquest uh, will catch them and possibly overtake them. At the moment they're in. Bit of interest. Oh, he's flashing his lights. Okay. Uh, I was trying to work out why his uh, rear-facing lights were coming on, but he's flashing his lights. His uh, number sixty there the back straight. cars are retired. The 74 about to get lapped by the GT500 leaders, and on another point, the 67 that rejoined after rolling is still racing around the track. Apparently yeah, three laps so, into uh, his uh, new re new spin, I think we could probably call it. Oh, contact in one, Lenchrod and FCR. Yeah, it was number 60 and 70 into T1. They went side by side into uh, make some lag content in the Lance Rotti car. And the uh, number 60 spun. And continued their way now. 
Now they're both outside the top five, just as we were saying that they looked as though that they were battling hard for the on track when they didn't really need to, and now that's let Bertone up into that position and Makalevsky as well for conquest, but still looks like they're all battling hard uh, for these minor positions. Mafia Racing now would be into the top five now in fifth spot in GT500. 300. 300. Oh, good grief. And why have we got another car joining the track very, very <laughs> late uh, in this a race? A late arrival. A late arrival. What thinks he can still get uh, into the top five from eight laps down? As Lobato, Lo, Lovato goes for the position. For Tony, squeezing! The, the lead, the lead, the lead is just time now. That's TDRT out of it. Indeed it is. Well, that's a massive shame for them, because they were quite comfortably ahead of everybody else and looking good in GT300 today. As Bertone gets on the grass there, fighting over this last position in GT300. Not the last position no, anymore, is, is this it? This is top five. He is comfortably in the top five. He's got a good... Uh... Oh, five, six tenths over Nariada. Yeah. Nariada. Yeah, Bertoni is the fifth car in the GT300, so if they're smart, they'll do strange things and both will be in. Carl Ralph nice. steps looking to make a move for the lead of GT300. Here he goes into the chicane. Oof. Oh, and not three goes. Make a move there. Of course, Tiger Express were very, very competitive at round one, but they suffered ill fortune with timeouts. We're reduced up into the lead now, third to first with one in one lap with uh, concerning the timeout from TDRT. Dimitrov seems to want to lead the, the, the lead back though. Don't really need to fight that hard, these two though. Oh, Dimitrov, that very wide. Yeah, exactly what I was saying there. If he gets a little bit wide there, that could have really screwed him up because he could have been dropping outside the top five because this class is actually remarkably close looking at it still I mean uh, it's still one mistake away from this top two being out of the top five at the moment as we've seen with the collision that has happened before so Dimitrov just needs to calm down a little bit and just accept second places now as Makalowski uh, closes in the third Well, all of that with the GT300 is going on, we see Schoyler having a hard time leveling one of the GT300 cars into T1. Could yeah, that be was oh! sixth place. Whoa, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Rudy. I think Hammer's just had a lag contact with car 63 on the back straight because... Oh, all of a sudden this car appeared, I was on board with Gahammer and all of a sudden this car appeared Riegler has to dive bomb in the, and Bertoni's up on the wall Dimitrov has run wide and it's all going off here and the lap cars are coming through in the GT500 Dimitrov has run wide and it looks as though he's going to drop back behind Maklansky and this is all going on Lobato seems oh, to go 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 big crash! As the Graf Tigler tried to come through and Riegler's going for lead down GT500 it's all go! This narrow winding track, it's all gone wrong for the cars being lapped and the cars doing the lapping. It was so close between them all. And that was a, well, I, I don't really know what to say about that. It looks as though three cars tried to fit into a gap for one. Well, it's just proof uh, that if there were seven cars battling for that sort of a position in one piece of track, especially where it's somewhere that, like Blackwood that's so fast and narrow, it's just not going to happen. Something's got to give, and in that case, it was Makalowski for Conquest. Hammer tried to go, tried to lap two cars from the middle, and they just both closed the gap on him. As he goes, Riegler for the lead. As he comes up behind Riegler, he moves as far out the way as he possibly can. Riegler for the lead in GT500. It's all scrap with uh, the lapping on the start finish straight dip, but the LLM GT300 car in a position again where he possibly could qualify for the, for the race because he is going for sixth position in the chicane and makes it. So it could be an interesting one. Yeah, Mikhailovsky has lost out huge amounts there in that collision there because he got spun round on the straight. And he's having, well, it looks like he's having tyre issues. Uh, his right rear in particular, he went right around uh, on the start finish train. He's having to just get out of the way of the GT500 coming through there. That GT500 took a very straight line, so he expected the GT300 just to move. And right behind them, I see Lamardi and Schoyler passing Linda. Uh, and going side by side in turn number one, so it's, it's, it looks as though lapping is going to be very, very hard in this race. 23 almost having a collision with the LLM GT300 car. 
turn two. Shoyla almost getting boxed in there behind a GT300 on the back straight as Lombardi tries to come through. Lombardi gets up inside and takes the position away. We've got another car spectating and rejoining. It's 74. That's the uh, pink Latvian car who had the stop go penalty, I think. I imagine that will have been down to some damage and lack of willpower. But they've decided to pit and carry on in the hope that it's just a small penalty, which I'm fairly sure it's not for this league, especially in the qualifying race. In fact, you're going to spin now. You managed to hold it, he almost... No, no, this isn't going to end well, this isn't going to end well. Get out of the way, son. Don't go on the grass, though. This is a bit dangerous at the moment. He's trying to get out of the way of everybody. So, staying to the side of the track and getting as far away as he can. But now he's in the middle of the road. This is getting dangerous as the cars come up to lap and this is a massive train here. This might be worth watching as Lombardi uh, makes a dive on uh, Shiloh again. Shiloh must have got back past again. But this little train here with a car that's sort of trundling around trying to stay out of the way of people is not exactly useful. In the meanwhile, Vigler took over P1 in GT500. Because it looks like the draft car got a bit of tire temperature problems. Maybe it has something to do with the content they made on the stop finish straight. Yeah, there's a bit of damage on that car. I also think he had a, a lag contact just before all that with another car that was in the middle of the road and suddenly appeared. So it was a horrible uh, chain of events for Graf T. I wonder if the. I wonder yeah, if we're going to for the yeah, GT300 lead. As Lovato is putting quite a lot of pressure on Maltep now, he ran wide in turn one. Looks to be struggling a bit with front end grip on that XRR. Yeah, I just checked them on the start of the train, there was still like six, seven turns between them, but there's happened something. And I think yeah, I'm pretty sure the car can give it a good shot now, this train. Pretty sure it was Rautzet running wide in turn one, although Lobato's put himself in a pretty compromised position there, not getting the run, especially with an XRR up ahead of you, you're just going to fall back even further. It's pretty stable on the straight though. Oh, there's a car, oh, this is going to be interesting, which way will the virus car, is he going to have to go around the outside of the chicane, that will not help reduce that by any, um, by any stretch of the imagination. For the virus car running a little bit wide in the chicane, puts uh, Lobato right on the back of Reducep as we come down to ward the pit straight. Oh, oh Reducep wins! Reducep backs it into the wall, got a gra wheel on the grass, and away he goes. Now where's he going to feed out? He's going to be miles behind. He's going to have to make all that ground that he made up in the early stages all over again. He's going to be battling uh, Dimitro, Pinto. Pinto going around the outside. So where's that put him? 14th overall. 7th place. 6th place. He's only two places to make up in 12 laps, but I, I, it looks as though he's, his rear tyres, his right rear tyres, certainly taking a fair amount of heat and he's struggling at the moment to get that under control again. As Gahammer's actually taking the lead back, we've missed this, Gahammer's taking the lead back off of Riegler in GT500. Still looks though he's, uh, I mean, he looks to have lower tyre pressures overall than Riegler. Riegler's tyres look a bit icy. Hang on, let's check the compound. Oh, 4 3 for Regler. Oh, 3 oh, 2 for Gahammer. Aha! So, Gahammer going for a, a better, well, better heat, really. Uh, sorry, better end pace, really, and better start pace, in my respect. I guess and Gahammer there, really. Tires just look wrong. Talking about tyres, the current P5, uh, guy in GT500, number 23 has completely wrecked rear tyres and now gets into a fight with Lombardi for the 5th place. And he's definitely struggling to keep that car in a straight line going into turns. That right rear tyre is definitely 120, 130 degrees. Lombardi should be able to have this one on the next straight because um, Basquiat just cannot get the power down off of any of the corners. Always oh, very sideways there again. Johnson, ooh. In contact, it's not the best way to get past though, but Lombardi should be able to get in the draft and ease past into the chicane. He must have had, he must have been continuously sliding at some point to get that 
But I think the cameras also look wrong on that car as well because look at the left front. I wouldn't. It just looks a bit cold. Yeah, everything looks wrong. <laughs> Whoa, he's gonna no, he's not gonna roll. He almost rolls in the final chicane there as well. So if he had rolled an FZR in the final chicane, I would have been particularly impressed. Oh, well, uh, from what I know, he's done it. LLM cargoes. Sorry to interrupt, but the LLM GT300 car went into fifth position going into the chicane. Yes, Dimitrov again slipping back there. It's been a hard last few laps for him. But that's. Oh, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe, maybe we will be seeing um, uh, Dennis Lynn driving for last lap more sports after all. Phil Diaz is telling us the car will reduce step is further back and he is. And I saw him struggling around out with the final hairpin, so maybe Carl will reduce step is another spin or another moment. In fact, yes, he lost another few seconds on that lap alone. So reduce step really looking as though it's not going to be a good race again for Tiger Express this weekend, despite looking as though they've had a good pace. Well, when your tyres start going off, and especially when you have an accident like that, when you're in such a strong position and you've got your rhythm going, you can just lose all sense of where you're at and what you need to be doing with the car. And I don't know, he's probably in the wrong place now, psychologically, to get any further back up. His race is probably over unless there's a large accident ahead of him. Bill Diaz reminding us once again that Rui Pinto is currently the 5th position car for the GT300. Five, 5 for 2nd in GT500 coming up. Yeah, the hammer's dropped back again. Hmm. We seem to be uh, getting caught up with GT300 every time something big happens in GT500. But as is well pointed out, Goik is just about pulled in Gahama now. It looks like Gahama's made some sort of mistake, because there's no way he would have just been overtaken and lost that amount of time. So, well, Gahama's very hot tyres earlier. Everybody was making them work. He was going faster than uh, Riegler was on the hot tyres through the majority of that mid-race section. But, I don't know, he might not have made a mistake. He might just be struggling at this stage. It'll be interesting to see what Goik does. straight as well as the FXR obviously with the four-wheel drive. Always loses him just that car length that he would need for draft. Three-way fight for the Three GT500 right now since Riegler went off into the last turn. Now he's going side by side with Gehemma into T1 and Riegler oh. off to make contact. The winner of it is Goik who gets the second place. Gehemma in P1 and Riegler drop back to third. On top of that, it seems like they're going to catch the GT300 around lap 25-26 uh, to lap them again. So this is going to be an interesting fight all the way to the line. Vincent Lombardi with a surprise fastest lap of GT500 there. Only XR in the race. GT500 XR in the race, that is. But just about that bit too far away for the slipstream. A three way fight down the back straight, and Gehammer's front tire is really hot. So we'll then see how he can make a stick through the hairpin. His top speed doesn't seem to be that great. Just about the same as the FXRs around him. Yeah, he was missing about 4 to 5 kph in the previous time I was checking him down, down straight. Down the, the back straight. In FZR has got restriction, 1% restriction, but not gonna do that much, I think. It could be that they're running a little bit higher wings to get better time to the well, first half of the track. 
It probably works when they're driving a P1, but to get through the field when people are close to the same base, it's really difficult. Uh, large three-way battle forming for sixth position in the GT300 class with in the Makalowski and Dmitriov all right together coming onto the back stretch. I can see a lot of action going on into the chicane this time around as Makalowski gets the run. Go it, go it goes for it. Go in oh, next to guy oh. on the back straight. Oh, Spa F1 memories. Two way around the back marker. And we see that Gamera has a little bit higher top speed. He's going to make this one stick. Yes, he does. Going dives for it and goes through. They make contact. Does he keep it in a straight line? Yes, he does. Rewide. 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 Rewide for the lead. Contact again. Rieger on the inside. Gamera on the right. Goik drops back. And that's happened something in GT300, two cars off in T1. That's Conquest, Conquest out of race. Fighting for sixth, coming up to the end of that lap. There's obviously been a contact between them, and it looks like between Dimitriov, he's gone right the way back and is sliding back everywhere. Very hot rear tyres oh, on that FXR. Lots of damage. GT500 goes on. Goik passed the hammer just after the first split. See if Gamma has enough speed to get through in the straight. You know he has a few kph more in there. Wonder if he can get by. resorting to using the handbrake at the moment to get around that final corner. Goik, did I say Goik? I meant your hammer. Yeah, I think this time around Goik will uh, extend the gap a bit and make sure that Gamma doesn't have a shot at him anymore. With three laps to go, he actually still has a good shot at taking the overall win in this qualification race. As Reich catches on to the back end of the top five of the GT300 pack, Rui Pinto quite a way back. Then next guy's up the road. You don't have a very pleasant track to lap people on when you're fighting for position. And that's Bertoni getting sideways. I think the GT300 lead battle here. Liberto. Lobato and yes. Bertoni. Mafia and Scuderia Gas. Both putting on a good show, not crashing into each other too much at the moment, just keeping it close and I think Bertoni waiting for an opportune moment to pounce right behind him here, looking to the inside. No contact, backs have it sensibly there. Lost quite a bit of ground doing so. Open up the gap, giving Lobato quite a bit of breathing space. Seems like Goik is going to have a hard time at the back straight again. His camera closed in. Well, Goik almost spins into the grass, doesn't keep him in a straight line. He continues, but loses the place to the camera. Now P4 is coming from behind again. But that gap seems big enough to, to keep Ooh, for him. It could, could be close for the next straight there. And the GT300 really keeps continuing battling. This time the Axelrod does have a really good run on the FCR now the next straight. 
meanwhile, they are getting led by the GT500 leader. And I wonder if those two know that they're actually going into their last lap. Passing start finish now. And the XR goes past. So it's number 81 leading the GT300 with the number 70 behind. Looks like the hammer is getting through the traffic again. Bertoni getting caught by a Lobato. Goigby Goig got past by number 70 after a little scrape in the grass. The pace uh, seems to drop a bit. Yeah, maybe just taking it easy at the end of the race. They are safe and forth by the looks of it. Yeah, but now while you were AFK for a bit. Pushed. Back to the rear of the 17 car. Lapping. So really what did I miss when I was AFK? Well in the meanwhile you were gone, Goik was actually up to second place, but in a little scrap down the, the front straight where they went three wide. He dropped the position again, and then eventually went off onto the the back straight into the grass and then dropped back to fourth. Although he now grabbed P3 again. As Regler comes across the line to take the sprint race and he will be on the grid. As will Gehammer and Zanker after an eventful race. Third place for Goik eventually. Fourth for Covenant. And Lombardi looks like he's going to take the final GT500 place in fifth. Tony wins in GT300. Lobato second. Tool to slow car 60 finishing third. Fourth, wrestling for Piri, and the final place looks as though it's taken by last lap motorsports. Dennis Lynn, get your uh, racing gloves in the ready. You are needed, son. I think Dennis has a different recipe to preparing for the race, but I wish him good. Yeah, but... And I hope he has some uh, exciting <laughs> things going on in it. <laughs> So now we will, I think it's a 10 minute break, we will get before the actual qualifying session, which will again be on two different servers, so our um, our uh, efforts will be um, diluted and we'll all pop onto different servers and um, watch the sessions for you. So we will be back in 5 to 10 minutes and we'll just take a quick break for now.